Good morning, this is Kim Hammer, pastor of Sling Baptist Church down in Tull, and we're bringing the morning devotion this morning from the book of Exodus, chapter 33. In chapter 32, that was where uh, Aaron had molded the golden calf, and Moses came down with the Ten Commandments and uh, threw them down, broke them. Those are the ones that God wrote with his own finger. And then Moses and God proceeded to execute punishment upon the people for rebelling against God who had brought them out of Egypt and worshiping other gods. The God that Aaron had fashioned from the silver and gold that the Israelites had. And so anyway, God issues punishment. When that's all said and done, we get in chapter 33, we find that the Lord tells Moses that he is going to leave that place and he's going to take the people and go to the promised land where he had... Uh, uh, told him he would send him. The only thing is, God says, but I'm not going to go with you. And this kind of created a, a little bit of a, a backlash, if you would. It created a little bit of a, a period of seeking for understanding. And Moses said, why not? And he said, well, because these people are stiff-necked. And I think God reached a point in that moment where he was just tired of dealing with his creation. He was tired of dealing with his people. And so the people begin to make the journey, but they removed all their ornaments, which means that they went kind of plain. They weren't all dialed up. They weren't all dressed up like somebody would be celebrating going to a new home. Instead, they were going there in a downtrodden way. I think maybe God let them experience that because as they went along the way, and uh, it was not really a happy occasion, even though it should have been because they were going to the promised land that he had uh, told them he would be sending them to, yet they were themselves uh, pretty downtrodden. And maybe God was giving them a taste of their own medicine. Maybe he was giving them time to reflect. You know, sometimes in parenting, that's the way we are with our kids. We want them to learn the lesson, but then we want them to learn the long-term lesson. So we want them to learn the lesson, we punish them at the moment, and then we let them learn the long-term lesson where we kind of let them sit and soak about it, and they get a little bit sour and bitter. Uh, but eventually, they come out from underneath it, and it gives them time to think about their actions so that whenever it is that they move on to the next chapter of their life, They've got that valuable experience in the past. I kind of think that's what God was doing with the Israelites here. He was letting them soak and sour and just kind of, uh, you know, get over their bitterness about the experience so that when they did get to the land of milk and honey, they would be excited about it and they would be ready to inherit it the way he wanted to. Now, Moses used to take a tent and he would pitch it outside the, the, uh, outside the camp and he would call this the tent of meeting. And this was where he went to meet with God as they journeyed along. And it was a separate place. It was a sacred place. It was a place set up intentionally for God to come down and meet with Moses so that Moses could get direction from God as to what he wanted them to do and what direction he wanted them to go. And so whenever it was that Moses would go in the tent, the cloud would come down from heaven. And this was the presence of the Holy Spirit that would come down upon the tent. The people would stand and they would worship while Moses was inside the tent. And so this experience was going on and it was God looking for the direct, or it was Moses looking for God's direction as to were they continuing in the direction that he wanted them to go. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face uh, as a man speaks to a friend. And I think that's critically important. And we've, we've talked about this before, the relationship that Moses and God had was such that they could talk face to face Although Moses never saw his face, yet he talked to him as though he was talking to a friend face to face. And that's the kind of relationship God wants us to have with him. In spite of the challenges, in spite of the questioning, in spite of the discipline that we have to receive from the Lord, in spite of how much sometimes we challenge God, God wants us to have that kind of friendship with him that we can meet him at a designated place and put it all out there and just say what we're thinking, because he already knows it anyway, say what we're thinking and listen to what he has to say which bonds an even better and tighter friendship now verse 12 chapter 33 says moses said to the lord you have been telling me lead these people but you have not let me know whom you will send with me you have said i know you by name and you have found your favor with me if you are pleased with me teach me your way so i may know and continue find favor with you remember that this nation is your people Moses was putting it back in the lap of God and saying these are your people you want me to lead them you got to show me a few things you got to you got to teach me a few things here so that I will know how to lead the people one thing specific Moses said who are you going to send with me 
And the Lord replied, and this is important, the Lord replied in verse 14, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I think this is the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If you look at the word presence, I'm not sure in your version, but in my version it's capitalized, usually indicating uh, that it was that it was uh, one of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He said, my presence will go with you. You remember whenever it was that the pillar of fire or the pillar of smoke would go before or after the people as they came out of Egypt? You remember how it is that uh, he appeared to him in a cloud? I think that this is God saying to Moses, my spirit will be with you and my spirit will lead you. And the spirit indwells us that know Christ is our savior. And if we are willing to listen to him, he will navigate us along the course of life so that we are going in the direction God wants us to go and we won't get high centered on a log in the middle of the stream, so to say. But if we'll listen to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he's going to guide us. And Moses needed somebody to guide him while he guided the people so that they weren't wandering around out there in the wilderness any longer than they had to be, but that they could get to the promised land that God told them that he would send them to. Now, you go on down and you see in the next verse, he says, How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with my people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the peoples on the earth and all the people on the face of the earth? One of the things I think that Moses wanted here was he wanted something distinguishing that would show people that as they came along and as they passed through the villages or whatever course God was going to take them on, that there was no doubt that this was God's people because they had the presence of the Lord with them and they had a element about them or they had a presence about them that showed that God was with them. Now one thing I want to point out too, there are three different songs that we sing today that are actually taken or based from Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, from Exodus chapter 33. When he uh, went back up to verse 12, the Lord said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Over in the book of Matthew chapter 11, 28, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I don't know if you remember that song, I will give you rest. This is the basis for where the song comes from. And God wants to give us rest, not only from the sins of our life, but also from the challenges and the obstacles of our life. The second song is in uh, chapter 33 and verse 17, where he said, I, I, will, I know you by my name. There's a song that we sing out there, He Knows My Name. Well, God knows my name. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, God wrote my name down in the book of life. God knows my name. He knows the name of every person ever born. He knows them in one of two ways. He knows them either in the book of life or he knows them by name and their name has never been put in the book of life, but that still doesn't mean he doesn't know their name. God knows us intimately and personally, but we control how much of God, we, we control how much of our life we want God to know about. The more open and transparent we are, the better it is and the greater friend we will become with God. You go on, you take a look at the rest of the uh, chapter. And then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I'll cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And so what he's going to do is he's going to put Moses up in the cleft of the rock. Now, cleft of the rock is nothing more than a hole in the rock. And a lot of times at night, the birds would go up there and rest in the cleft of the rock. And that's where they would take shelter. And in this, it talks about how that God would put his hand over Moses while he passed by in front of him because his glory was too great. And Moses could not stand to see God in his full glory because it would destroy him and it tells us that as the glory of God passed by and he was showing Moses all the goodness that he was and that he had given to Moses and that he had to offer to Moses that he saw the back of God as he went by you remember when the 70 elders we read a couple chapters later 70 elders and her and Aaron and Moses were up on the top of the mountain and it talks about how that they uh, saw God and they wanted part of God that they saw was his feet and they described his feet and the uh, you know glass under it like sapphire we're seeing bits and pieces of God but we're not going to see God in his full entirety because we cannot stand to see God in our, his full entirety because of his glory and grace and it would destroy us but in this case Moses saw another part of God he saw the backside of God as he went by and Moses looked up and saw now there's a third song in here and it's in verse 22 
Verse 22 says, When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. Song talks about how that we are in the cleft of the rock and that God protects us there. You know, God can only protect us if we go where God tells us to go, if we stay as long as God tells us to stay, if we're obedient to what he tells us to do, and then if we rejoice in what we have seen. Those are some key elements for us understanding the glory of God and experiencing the presence of God. My prayer today is that you'll experience the presence of God and with confidence, not as the Israelites who had to walk away like with little kids, but as individuals who have a personal relationship with Christ, my prayer is that you will walk away with confidence because God wants us to live knowing that his presence is always with us.